You can now buy a property with no money down, even if you don't have a guarantor. You can have one of two reactions to this news. If you've been stuck renting, then this could feel like the salvation you've been waiting for. But if you remember the run up to 2008, it could make you fearful that a property crash is just around the corner. So, Professor, would you say it's time for everyone to panic? Who's right? Let's find out. So this 100% mortgage comes from Skipton, a major building society. It's called a track record mortgage and it's designed to hit the major pain point of people who can afford mortgage payments because they're already paying more than that in rent, but they can't save for a deposit. So this is only open to first-time buyers who've previously been renting, and they need to prove that they've been paying rent and bills on time for 12 months in a row. They can borrow up to £600,000, with the maximum loan being capped based on how much they're paying in rent now, and the interest rate is just under 5.5%, fixed for five years. So first of all, is this a good deal from a first-time buyer's point of view? Well, the rate is not competitive compared to what you could get if you had a bit of a deposit. But you could say if you're already paying more than that in rent, then it doesn't matter and at least it gets you out of the rental sector. But there is one major concern, which is you're starting out with no equity. And what if you still have no equity in five years' time when the fixed rate ends? If no one else is offering 100% mortgages at that time, then you'll be stuck with your current deal with an interest rate that's no longer fixed and could be anything. At the moment, Skipton's standard rate is 6%, but who knows what it might be. But won't you have equity after five years because you've been paying the mortgage down? Well, what a lot of people don't realise is that in the early years of a mortgage, you're actually hardly paying off any of it at all. In fact, say you're borrowing £225,000, which would leave you with a monthly payment of £1,200 over the maximum 35-year term, which is roughly the average UK rent. After five years, you'll only have paid off £12,000 of capital and will have paid £60,000 in interest. And by the way, if you assume that the rate stays the same for the whole 35 years, you'll end up paying £281,000 in interest, far more than the actual value of the house. So unless you get a big bump in your equity from property prices going up, you might not actually be that much better off than you would have been renting, and you'll be stuck and not have any options when you come to refinance. But will the introduction of products like this produce the property price growth that first-time buyers need, or will it actually produce a crash? Let's find out. But first, if you've learned something new from this video so far, please give it a like and consider subscribing. It really helps me out, and it makes it more likely that you'll see videos like this in the future. So does the introduction of 100% mortgages like this mean that a crash is coming? Is this peak market behavior? Well, the mortgage situation is still nothing like what it was going into the 2008 crash. Back then you could get mortgages for up to 120% of a property's value. And you could also get self-certification, which basically means you could just make everything up. That's not the case with this product where there are still very strict criteria in place. But it is potentially a worrying sign that banks are getting back to their bad old ways especially when you consider that high loan-to-value lending is as prevalent now as it was in 2008, and there are now more than 150 mortgage products available at loan-to-values of 95% or higher. On the whole, though, I'd say that products like this are more of a reaction to higher interest rates than they are an indication of all-out mania. Lenders want to lend. They're still keen to do business, but because rents are so high at the moment, people are finding it hard to save and can't get a deposit together. So one way for lenders to be able to do business with these people is to offer 100% mortgages. The other way to allow people to borrow is to extend mortgage terms, which spreads the payments out and lowers the monthly payment, which is why over the last year, we've seen such an increase in the proportion of mortgages that are being taken out for 35 years or more. All of this for first-time buyers means less equity and more debt being paid off for longer. But the alternative is being in the rental market, which is a disaster right now. So you can see why they're keen to get on the ladder at any price. So is this good news for first-time buyers? It comes with some pretty major risks, but you could argue that it's the least bad of all the current options. Will Skipton, the lender, get burnt by this? Probably not, because they're only lending to people who've got really strong credit records and will probably want to maintain those so they won't want to default if they can possibly help it. And the £600,000 cap means they're not going to be doing much lending in London and the South East, which is the area most vulnerable to falls in prices. So in my view, rather than bringing about a crash, products like this, plus initiatives like potentially bringing back help to buy, which is rumored to be happening, will actually keep prices up and just keep the party going for longer. Then, just when everyone stops worrying about the house price crash and goes, okay, fair enough, maybe they are just going to go up forever. That's when you get the crash. In fact, most people end up buying into property at exactly the wrong time because there's one key fact that they completely misunderstand. 
So keep watching this video where I explain what that is and how you can avoid making the same mistake.